Daytona Beach, Florida, the world center of racing, where each February for over 60 years, fans and racers have gathered to enjoy a break from winter and kick off a new NASCAR season. The Daytona International Speedway is the massive field of dreams, where victory turns drivers into legends. Now an intriguing NASCAR Nationwide Series field of young stars, new to NASCAR stars, and the sport's biggest stars take to the track to make final preparations for a big Daytona race. It is a beautiful mid 70 degree day for Speed Week's Thursday and the beginning of ESPN's season long exclusive coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. A campaign that runs for 10 months coast to coast across America begins as always at Daytona where a packed field of racing stars is preparing to compete for a prized possession, a winner's trophy from Daytona International Speedway. A lot of great stories to cover and to talk about for this season opener for the Nationwide Series. You see the drivers having just finished their first practice session, getting ready to begin their final practice. The Bush brothers among those working together in the draft and who'll be competing together this season. Let's set some of the stories of the season and of the day for you right down into the garage. We begin with Dave Burns. And Ellen, I'm not sure that Ricky Stenhouse has gotten to have all the Daytona fun that he wants to have quite yet because uh, you were 15th on the speed chart. I think that means you were doing single car runs this morning, right? We were doing single car runs, but uh, our pop tart tries Christmas treats uh, Mustang was was not too bad. Um, you know, it's tough to tell. I mean, we were get, catching catching a little draft for some of the guys, but uh, we'll go out and practice uh, drafting with uh, Trevor here the next practice and and see what we got. Um, the one good thing we got is a, a nice paint job and uh, some good pop tarts. Uh, yeah, you'll be snacking on those all weekend, I'm sure. Now you walked into this place, the defending champion of the series. What was that like to come in here? Is that? That feels good, uh, but the thing is, it, it's 2012. Um, we got to do it again, and and I think we can. We got a really good team underneath us. We got some good cars, uh, some good power, and uh, you know we're going after another one. They made some changes, but driver and crew chief stay the same. They're going for number two in a row in the Nationwide Series. Vince Welch, standing by with Danica Patrick, and Danica is uh, visiting with her junior motorsports teammate Cole Witt. Was doing a little bit of drafting with Cole. Not only are you full time NASCAR, but man, initial assignment, double duty weekend here. You've been in the cup car. You're going to run the duel later today in the Daytona 500 on Sunday. How's the double duty experience been thus far? Uh, introduction right now, but um, I think it's really good, especially here at Daytona, where in the nationwide cars, we don't get a ton of practice. We just have this morning to do it. So we need to do our qualifying runs and then we need to figure out how the how the racing's going to work. And, you know, Cole and I were talking because we uh, we obviously need to figure out how to bump draft a little bit. It looked like some guys were able to do it for quite a few laps on end. So you do go a lot faster when you do that. So it's a matter of you know when you need to pop out and when you need to find the air. And good God, I actually feel like I'm able to help somebody at this point. You know, like doing the corner, not down the straightaway. So I, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm I'm starting to have some some experience, but. Um, you know, definitely still a lot to learn, and uh, there are some guys out there that have been doing this a while that are figuring out how to run in tandem for a lot longer, so we'll have to work that out. Having led some laps here last time you were here and 10th uh, place finish, how has that impacted your confidence as you came into this uh, nationwide weekend? Well, I've, I've run the most amount of races of uh, here at Daytona um, as opposed to all the other tracks, So, and I did that on purpose because... Uh, you know, you want to do well at the big races, and Daytona is one of those. So, um, you know, the more experience I can get on these big tracks, the better. Uh, yeah, it gives me confidence. Obviously, we, we ran in tandem in the summer race, and that went really well. And, um, you know, I think we have a good chance to do well here. We just got to figure out how to keep these things cool enough that uh, we don't wa waste time swapping. Yeah, thanks for the time. Good luck. Danica Patrick. Uh, let's go to Jamie Little. Well, there's already a lot of buzz about this guy, Austin Dillon, the 2011 Truck Series champion, and now you're here to contend for the championship this year. First time, though, in a nationwide car here at Daytona. What's your impression so far? Oh, well, we just did qualifying runs, so it's uh, pretty normal, similar to the truck, and uh, a little faster, though. You can tell the speed's a little different, and uh, I'm having fun right now. We're getting ready to do a little uh, tandem, I think, with, with Elliot, so me and him are teammates this year, and we're going to be working together a lot, so I'm looking forward to that, but... So far, the Advocare Chevrolet really fast in qualifying trim, I think, and uh, I didn't have too much help from me in, in front of me. There's a lot of people out there getting runs at the end, but we had a fast lap, so I'm proud of the guys for really uh, putting some speed into this car. What did winning the Truck Series Championship last year and all the race wins that you had do to help you prepare for this run this year? 
Uh, you know, I think just uh, the confidence and knowing how to, to win and finish at the end of the year was big. And uh, knowing that you can't ever give up and keep pushing each and every race to get all the points. you got to turn the bad days into good days, and hopefully we can do that a lot this year. I said there's a lot of buzz. He's back in the number three, and that's the first time full-time in this series since 2000. Let's go over to Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Jamie. You know, last year, Kurt Busch made only a single appearance in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, but he made the most of it, sitting on the pole and celebrating in victory lane with a victory at Watkins Glen International. But that was 2011, and a lot has changed over the winter for 2012 for Kurt Busch. Yeah, he wants to celebrate more like what happened a year ago, but he's also now with a new team and a new schedule. And for many people who know Kurt Busch, the people that are close to him, there is a different Kurt Busch, a very relaxed, a lot of smiles. And Kurt, of all the changes you guys made in the offseason, what excites you the most? Well, let's just start off with a hug, Doc. Come on. <laughs> I'm so sorry with the way it, last year ended. But yeah, we were supposed to talk at the end of last year, and it's never, never got to happen. Yeah, we, we talked, and I, I feel horrible. But with this offseason, all the work that I've gone through to put together this team with Kyle, uh, you know, the number 51 Phoenix Racing Chevrolet on the cup side, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a humbling experience to, to go from top teams, but yet this team's Finch program and in Kyle Busch Motorsports, we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to do this with a serious effort. So with HendrickCars.com with us here on this Nationwide this weekend, it just gives you that sense of, hey, you know, Hendrick's got his arm around us and we're going to be all right. We talked about Kyle. You guys have always been brothers, but now for the first time, you're teammates. And we down there talking with Kyle a moment ago. What are you guys able to do here together with this schedule in the Nationwide Series? Well, for us on that 54 Monster Energy Drink car, it, it's all about going out there for points and to try to win and bring home that owner's title. Over here with this number one James Finch special, we're all about the W. So I got to make sure that I'm not taking points away from that 54 car. But when Finch comes and taps me on the shoulder, he wants to make sure I'm going full throttle for his team. So a lot of things to balance from inside the driver's seat. But overall, just jumping in, getting out there in the draft like I was with Kyle. It's just the smile on my face is big, and I'm having fun with it. So a lot of work to do, but uh, hey, we're going to be in this mix to win it. And I got HendrickCars.com to draw a lot of people to their website, hopefully, this weekend. Good to see you smiling. Good to see you so excited, and great to have you here in the Nationwide Series. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate you coming over and talking. Kurt Busch, uh, one of the uh, big-name drivers now with a small team, just one of many changes taking place as we begin 2012 here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. A lot of things going on here in the garage area. Let's uh, go upstairs to the guys who will call the action, Alan Bestwick, Dale Jarrett, and Andy Petrie. Doc, thanks. And indeed, since we left the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway just over 90 days ago, much has changed for this NASCAR Nationwide Series as we begin the new campaign. If you took the lineup of names and drivers and car numbers and sponsors from Homestead, it doesn't look anything like this Daytona lineup. No, it certainly doesn't. And let me say, that was a great opening to our yeah. season and Nationwide right there. But you know, as I look at this season, I see a clean slate, basically. But if I could take my pen, I would write on that clean slate the word opportunity. It is out there. We just heard from some very hopeful drivers right there that expect to do a lot in this series. There's some others. Cole Witt is out there. Obviously, Danica wants to do a great job. There's Justin Allgaier. But there's two guys that I'm really looking at that have tasted the Sprint Cup side. They want to get back there. Sam Hornish is one of those, has a full-time effort here. He knows that a ring and a trophy would get him back over in that Sprint Cup side, possibly. And also, Elliot Sadler in the two car. He ran hard last year. He expected a championship. Didn't even get a victory last year. I see that changing a lot. He wants to be back on the Sprint Cup side, too. And this uh, this kind of race, these big races bring out the big guns, though. We're going to start this season off, and those guys with that clean slate are going to have to run up against some really good, talented drivers like Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, and more. They're all here. So it's going to be a really good race. We, those guys are not in it for any championship points. They are in it for the win, and we're going to see a great race today. Or, no, we're going to see a great race on Saturday. As fans have followed the headlines from NASCAR over the winter and even over speed weeks thus far, been a lot of conversation about rule changes and the style of drafting in the racing we've seen here at Daytona. The Sprint Cup side has featured a lot of pack racing. The nationwide side has just gotten onto the racetrack. And let's compare what we might see from the two divisions. Well, as you said, Alan, a lot of changes on the Sprint Cup side. And what we saw in the Bud shootout this past Saturday night was fantastic racing, pack racing that the fans really want to see. And the drivers really prefer this too as I talked to them, they'd much rather be in this type position. 
I'm not sure that we're going to see all of that because all of those rule changes that he's talking about wasn't carried over to the nationwide cars, Andy. Well, they did carry over some of the rules. They, they took the drill opening and made it about the same as we see on the Sprint Cup car. They lowered the rear bumper. But two key things that they have not done to the nationwide cars that they did to the Sprint Cup cars are that rear spoiler and the amount of water that's in the cooling system. And that's going to allow these cars to really hook up in this tandem graph. And it's worth a lot. When they touch bumpers, they have got a lot more speed there. And it's going to be worth a lot to do that. So you're going to see it more. You're going to maybe see them swapping a little more because of the cooling system changes. But we're going to see a lot of tandem racing. And why didn't NASCAR go as far with the rule changes in the Nationwide Series as they did with the Sprint Cup Series? Rule changes cost money to implement and of course these nationwide series teams aren't as well funded as those on the sprint cup side there's a recap of the rule changes that nascar did make to the nationwide series for this daytona race and most notably that bottom one all the conversation about electronic fuel injection on the cup side again that has not come to the nationwide series yet they're still using the carburetor with the restrictor plate and the tapered spacer little show and tell on some of the rule changes for daytona from our espn tech garage here's champion crew chief tim brewer tim Thanks, A.B. You're exactly right. There are very few changes, but like Andy alluded to, the rear bumper, they extended the rear bumper two inches from the quarter panels all the way around, and I think that was a good move because it makes a bigger hole in the air, and it slows the cars down a little bit. But like Andy was also saying, the biggest change was to the cooling system itself. They reduced the capacity of the cup cars, but they left these guys alone because it cost a lot of money to change the radiators in these cars. But what they did do, they moved this grill opening up to make sure that they had adequate airflow and it was more effective during testing. But what the guys have to really do while they're racing, they have to pay attention to that water temperature. Because here at Daytona, if you have a lot of temperature, you're gonna really push the water out. With that 25 pound valve, it takes very little time on the racetrack to exceed that water temperature. Once it expands, it has to go somewhere and it's gonna go out on the racetrack. And you'll burn the engine up if you don't pay attention to that. AB? All right, Tim, thanks. So we'll keep an eye on how the rule changes they did make and didn't make affect these cars in the final practice. 90 minutes of final practice for the season opener for the NASCAR Nationwide Series begins when we come back. NASCAR Nationwide Series practice is brought to you by Captain Morgan. Raise your glass, always in moderation. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. And McDonald's, I'm loving it. After some overnight rains, the showers have moved across the Daytona International Speedway. The track is dried, and we're set for the final practice for the NASCAR Nationwide Series before Saturday's season opening 300-miler, a race that has been taken the last four straight years and six of the last seven by the man on the left there, Tony Stewart. He runs, what, one nationwide race a year a lot of these years, yeah. and he wins it. That's a pretty good average. And it's made, you said in talk to Tony, and you say, what? what is it? What is it? But that was just like talking to Dale Earnhardt, too. You could talk to him years ago because he was so dominant doing the same things. And they can't, I mean, it's just they're so good at it that they don't even realize sometimes how good they are. Yeah, it's almost like a, it's an instinct that's just yeah. deep down inside. Of, I don't know how they learn how to do this. Tony has won these things just about every way you can win them. But, and uh, and no. you think about the rule package evolutions and the evolution of drafting and so on, and yet, so, and even driving for different team owners. Somehow, when the checkered flag is waving in this race at Daytona, Tony Stewart's the first one to get there. Often not by much, by the way. <laughs> Check out last year's finish. How about seven one thousandths of a second? Watch Stewart in that blue four car come to the checkered flag despite the best blocking efforts of everybody else. No, no way you thought he was going to win that one, but he did by that much. Let's hear from Tony Stewart down in the garage area. Alan, he's been watching all of those highlights, and they were sort of saying, you've won it every way you can here. How do you want to win it this year and get five in a row? Uh, you don't care how you win it. You just want to win them here. It's, uh, it's Daytona. So, uh, you know, the, the main thing at the end of the day is being in victory lane here. You have been up and down the garage area here. In fact, we're about uh, 10 stalls away from where your car is talking to different drivers. What are you trying to uh, do, uh, socialize, uh, learn about what we're going to do in this pack session or what? Yeah, just trying to figure out exactly what we're trying to accomplish during the next session here. We're not going to want to run uh, very many laps. We feel like our Oreos car is uh, really, really good and, and with a bunch of good Chevys here. So uh, and we've been running with a we've been running with a brand X car out there with Joey Logano. So. Uh, Joey and I seem to work really good together here, and um, you know we're just trying to figure out exactly what we need to do to get as much accomplished in a short amount of time and not worry about hurting these cars today. 
Sounds like the uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup champ is pretty confident about his nationwide car here this weekend, guys. Jerry Punch? And as well, he should be. And by the way, the guy who pushed uh, Tony Stewart to victory here in the nationwide race a year ago, this guy right here, pushed him right across in the draft. I think Tony owes you one, right, Junior? I don't even remember who was pushing who, but uh, had a lot of good races here. Tony's a heck of a plate racer, and I've had a lot of good good times out there drafting with him in a, in a nationwide series and in the Cup Series. But our tax layer car is, uh, you know, we're working the bugs out. Went out there and ran a little bit. We're hitting on the ground some, so we're cutting some things out under the car and uh, working on uh, the cooling a little bit. We'll go out there and run a little bit more in the second practice, and that should do it. Last, we remember one of the great memories we have of you of your six wins here was 2010 when you drove the three car, the Wrangler colors, and you know, started third, led 33 laps, and went to victory lane in a three car. Pretty special, huh? Yeah, that's pretty weird, uh, but uh, it was a, a big deal to me. Uh, but mainly, uh, you know, I hope his fans enjoyed it and hope the people that, you know, have appreciation for for that era and uh, and what my father did appreciated that uh, race and 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 what we were able to do there with Wrangler and JR Motorsports is pretty neat deal. So uh, hopefully there we all have other good memories like that uh, in the future. We'd love to win this race with Tax Slayer. They've been a great partner of ours. Uh, really awesome partner. And uh, if we can't win it, Cole Cole can get it over there in the 88 car. Or, Maybe Danica, who knows? We got a lot of power down here, a lot of good speed, and should should be able to contend. Hey, Junior, thanks for your time, buddy. Thank you. Dale Earnhardt, Jr., and by the way, the, the plan here, Alan Bestwick, is for him to go out and draft with young driver Cole Witt. He wants to be able to get Cole in the draft and push him and see what Cole can do handling these cars now with the new extended rear on the car, which has lowered, uh, reduced the downforce on the back of the car. That's what he wants to do here when they go back out in this next session. Stephen the Tartar Earnhardt Jr.'s uh, Sprint Cup crew chief. They're having a conversation as well. You know, the name Earnhardt at Daytona. Uh, we talk about winning here, turns drivers into legends. And when you think about Dale Earnhardt, and I know it took a while for him to win the Daytona 500, but all the races he won at this racetrack, so many in so many different series, and uh, his son as well has had a ton of success at this racetrack. Yeah, yeah. it's just amazing, the, the two of them. It was ridiculous how many races that uh, Dale Sr. won before he won the Daytona 500, which was by far the biggest one. But he won 30 some odd races total, counting the nationwide races and IROC races and twin 125s at the time and now 150. So he's had, had a lot of wins here. Yeah, you knew if he was in the race, whatever it was down here, that that's who you had to be. Yeah. And even though it took him until 1998 to win the Daytona 500, you still knew every time you came here, you had to beat Dale Earnhardt if you were going to win the Daytona 500. Yeah, and you had to do that in 93, my first year with him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 47 combined wins for the Earnhardt family. Wow here at Daytona International Speedway between Dale Sr. and Dale Jr. So the Nationwide Series had a 50-minute practice session this morning, which was their very first practice of Speed Weeks. Now there's a 90-minute session that has just started, and that's it. Qualifying tomorrow, line them up and race on Saturday. And as we talk about a clean slate for this season, new names in new places, or maybe even names that aren't necessarily new. Here's Trevor Bain, right? Run the Nationwide Series last couple of years. But he's in the 60 car this year. That's not Carl Edwards. I was going to say, how many times are we going to say that before we realize that that's Trevor Bain in there, too? Because, my gosh, we've seen Carl Edwards dominate in this series, winning championships in lots of races. But here's a great opportunity for a young man that, oh, yeah, by the way, won the Daytona 500 last year. And really doesn't have a firm plan for his racing season in this series. They're going to go to the first few, but they're still trying to put the, the sponsorship package together for Trevor Bain to run the entire season. And they're not there yet. Now, you know, it's tight as dollars are out there and, and trying to make all of this work. We see it a lot on the cup side and having to really piece together three, four, maybe five sponsors to make a season work. Uh, it is that much more difficult, uh, even though the dollars are smaller, uh, it's still a, a difficult sell over here, but a lot of talent and hopefully uh, some companies will loosen up and uh, come into this series and help some of these young drivers. Now this should be a really good tandem right here with Sam Hornish and Brad Keselowski. These Dodges are awful strong. They have good power. I think they'll be uh, pretty strong on Saturday. Hornish going to run for the championship in the nationwide series full schedule this year after not racing very much last year. Brad Keselowski in the 22 
going to cut back the Nationwide Series schedule that he'll run this year. He'll share that 22 car with Parker Fliggerman, new crew chief and some new crew members surrounding Brad on that car this year after Todd Gordon, who crew chief that machine in the Nationwide Series last year, was moved up to the Penske Cup level. Just what they're doing right now, they're going to try to see just how many laps that they can run in this configuration with the 22 car behind until it gets to a point where it starts pushing water. You'll see the water start coming out the overflow at the base of the windshield. They'll make that switch, see how, how quickly and efficiently they can make it so they don't lose a lot of time while they're making the switch. And they can make a, they can stretch this out as far as the number of laps a little bit by offsetting that car. In this case, the 22 car there, if he moves out to the right a little bit, gets a little bit more air. Now, they're going to lose a little bit of speed. They won't be quite as fast as some of the laps that we saw uh, where drivers were tucked up for maybe two laps and getting the most out of it. But you can prolong this a little bit just by getting a little air to the radiator. Yeah, that's why they're practicing this so much. We can see when they do offset and get a little bit of air, it slows this tandem down about three-tenths of a second. When you switch that tandem, it costs about a second or more, maybe two seconds a lap. So you, you want to try to figure out what's the best way to do it, you know, because it is if you line them up just exactly right behind each other, it's faster, but just by a little bit. You know, one other change for these drivers working in this two car draft that we haven't spoken of yet is NASCAR has outlawed the use of inter driver communication in the car. So Hornish and Kozlowski can't talk to each other directly like the drivers had come to know a year ago. And that makes this tandem drafting a little more tricky a little more tricky yeah that driver there the second driver can't really see but you can't see in the big packs either so it's not I like the idea I know there's a lot of different opinions uh, about that but I like the idea that that they can't talk to one another I, I think that that brings too much of the team aspect in you know this is a sport yeah about these teams and they are uh, out of the same race shop but uh, when you get on the racetrack uh, it's about getting the job done and I think that it puts more on the driver and that's what it should be about Jamie's been uh, tracking that Penske 22 for us. And Alan, because they can't talk to each other directly, the spotters are very busy. And Brad Keselowski behind the wheel giving great feedback, what he's feeling and what he's seeing in the race car. And when he got the temperatures up to about 250, that's when he pulled out and they swapped positions. So basically, he's telling his spotter what he's seeing and feeling, and he's telling Sam Hornish Jr. spotter, so they are communicating that way. So it's taking a little time, but so far they're doing a nice job of it, Alan. And every new layer you add to that communication chain, Jamie, is an opportunity for there to be a failure to communicate. Yeah, one reason we're seeing this more in this series than we saw in the Sprint Cup series, those cooling systems hold about seven gallons of water in the Nationwide Series. That's about five gallons more than we're seeing now in the cup in the cup garage because they limited the size of the radiators and the tanks and everything just so they could not do this for a, a, an extended period of time. Now, the, the flip side of that is, is it takes a little longer to cool that much water back down when they do switch. Yeah. Now, away from the cooling system on the Sprint Cup cars, they have a much smaller spoiler which has limited the amount of downforce that they have in the back of these cars. And they're really not able to get up against each other as we saw Saturday night in the Bud Shootout we've seen in every practice session. I'm wondering just how much these drivers that are gonna be participating this afternoon in the 150 mile qualifying races, in doing this now and then having to change their mindset as to what they can and can't do in the cup car. I know that they're professionals and they have that and they know the difference in the cars, but yeah. uh, it will take some adjustment because the closing rate is a little quicker. Although these cars are very fast out here, you know, the cup cars are over 200 miles per hour in these drafts. Sam Hornish Jr., the 2006 Indianapolis 500 winner, going to be one of the championship contenders in the 2012 NASCAR Nationwide Series and, of course, launched off into that title bid off his first victory in this series. It came in the second-to-last race of the year last year at Phoenix International Raceway, where we'll run just a week from Saturday.
as we watch Joey Logano and Tony Stewart draft in Nationwide Series final practice. Reminder, we have live coverage of qualifying for the Nationwide Series tomorrow, 2 Eastern, on ESPN2. Friday night, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series season opener from Daytona, 7 Eastern on speed. That should be an exciting one, always is. And then the Nationwide Series season opener. ESPN, Saturday news, noon Eastern. Our coverage presented by GoDaddy.com. Sunday, we'll have NASCAR now in the morning. Our sports center at the Daytona 500 special wrapping up the Great American Race Sunday night. We're all over Speed Weeks 2012 on the ESPN Networks. Looking back from Danica Patrick to Cole Witt. Heard from Danica in her interview with Vince a little while ago that they needed to get out there and work on this. Yeah, they ran the first practice session, and they really didn't do this. They, they ran together, but they didn't do the tandem-style drafting we're seeing. And I think they looked back at some of the, ta the lap times other teams were doing and how long they could do it. And they went, hey, we got to figure out how to do this too. So it looks like they're doing a good job of it so far. Yeah, I think before that first session, they watched some of the 93 to 2000 racing, and that's the way that you <laughs> drafted. And now they've gotten with the program here. For a, a young guy like Cole Witt, who is doing this for the first time, this bumper to bumper push all the way around the racetrack, how difficult to get comfortable doing it. You know, I. Yeah, it's hard for me to say, too, because I haven't done this exact style of racing, but in talking to the drivers, it, it takes a little bit of time, and, and certainly you have to be comfortable with who you're doing it with here, and, and I think that both of these drivers are, but I, I can honestly say, they tell me that once you get attached, that it, it's as much up to the driver in front as it is to one pushing to, to make it all work, so it takes both of them, and you have two drivers here that don't have a ton of experience, but they're learning very quickly. Cole Witt with the one truck series race here at Daytona. This is first nationwide try at this racetrack. Vince, what do you got? In reference to Cole Witt, I spoke with Cole just before he climbed in the car, and he said, man, I had no idea. Uh, never done it before, obviously. He and Danica spent a lot of time in the break between the two practices talking to one another about their communication because they miscommunicated during the previous practice. Cole thought he was going to let Danica swap positions with him and then they ended up side by side, not what they wanted to do. So no radio to radio communication between the two drivers. Remember, different than a year ago. So still working through the kinks for Cole Witt, experiencing this for the very first time. He had a bit of a bewildered look on his face when I was talking to him about it earlier. You know, one thing that I already see that Danica from last year when they were doing some of this, she had a difficult time in keeping that car behind her attached to her rear bumper to maximize the speed. So we can already see that she's made a big improvement in that. Cole Witt's done a great job of picking up on this very quickly, and you know they're turning some good laps here. Now watch Tony Stewart, Joey Logano. They've been in this configuration for now almost six laps. So Tony's figured out how to do this and keep his car cool, running behind. They run pretty fast laps. They're running sub 47 second laps, uh, 192 miles an hour. 38 is Casey Kane, who will split this car this year with the Brad Sweet. And the 30 is James Busher for Turner Motorsports. Those two cars out of the Turner stable, out there working together. Austin Dillon. And Elliot Sadler, three and two, Richard Childress Racing teammates. Remember another of the changes for this year. Kevin Harvick Incorporated basically being sold and merged with Richard Childress Racing. And that uh, particular three car, I think, is going to have a lot of attention from the team owner this year. You think? Yeah, yeah, I probably. Think so. Yeah, I was wondering if Andy <laughs> just looking at it there, it catches your eye the first time. It, it does. I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories. It does. And I know that with what you're talking about, Richard Childress is going to have a, a vested interest in this. Success of this team this year. He'll so be paying close attention. Austin here. Dillon, the driver, is Richard's grandson. Talking some of the, the, the folks involved in Richard Childress Racing, they said, oh, yeah, RC's been uh, been really paying to attention. The bottom, coming inside. Okay. This is a planned switch. You heard the spotters kind of coordinate this. They're going to switch in three. And how efficiently you make that swap is how you know, it really does have a lot to do with how much time you lose on this particular lap. I mean, you can lose a couple, even three seconds a lap doing this if you don't do it right. You're going to lose at least a second. Yeah, and I think we've seen anywhere from a second to, as you said, it can be up to two seconds if they're not very efficient in what they do, and that's a lot of time on the racetrack. You see, they're having a harder time getting attached here and staying that way. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. they got to make that switch efficiently and then get right back in contact. You see there's some 
pieces of the car. Looks like maybe the track bar mount on the right side is dragging a little bit on Elliot Sadler's car. And he will hear that from inside the car or feel it. Feel it more than anything. Yeah, anything, anytime anything's touching underneath and you're going these speeds, uh, it, it literally will move the car around. So it'll wear down some. It might be something they'll have to go in and work on, though, for sure. Yeah, they, they need to work on this. You can see how they're moving across, how Austin Dillon is moving across the rear bumper. That's kind of unsettling for, for Elliot Sadler. Yeah, it really is. And Elliot's very good at this. Elliot's great at this racetrack. And this, but you can see how that's upsetting his race cars. He's trying to get down in the corner with Austin moving back and forth across his bumper. So he's just going to have to do a little more work and get a little more comfortable in making all of this happen. Drops of water hitting the camera lens there. My question is, is that coming from the uh, radiator overflow on the car or maybe some of these uh, darker clouds that have suddenly moved in over the speedway? Now we've seen these two, uh, three tandems get together here in a little uh, mini pack. Let's see how, how they handle this. You can see the swap now with Casey Kane and James Bush. That's a good time to make that swap too. When you get into a group and you've got some, you know, some cars ahead of you kind of busting the air, make that swap right there you maybe don't lose quite as much time as if you do it in, out in the clean air and plus if you run up there on two groups side by side there's no place to go yeah anyway might as so, well do might as well you know, stop. yeah and what we've seen is you know some of these the switches made with the car in the back going to the inside others they prefer to drop down and, and let the car go around the outside and that will become just driver preference whichever one they feel like they can make that switch quicker and more efficient is what they'll do between them I like you could hear it was either Cole Whit, Danica Patrick getting out of the throttle. Yeah, it was Danica that we were riding on board with. Or if they were just getting clear of the traffic to go back and make the swap and try it again, or if they're going to come back in and regroup. But we are 21 minutes into the 90-minute final practice session for the NASCAR Nationwide Series before Saturday's season opener. Brad Keselowski having a conversation in the garage. We'll see if he runs any more laps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> Austin Dillon and Elliot Sadler, the Richard Childress Racing teammates, just kind of keeping an eye to see if Dillon's making a little more progress, getting a feel for this. Well, it's not like he hasn't done it. Uh, the trucks do it somewhat too. So, it's, but the, I guess the big difference is is the way that the, the car handles versus the truck. Dale, I don't know if you've driven trucks much, but uh, I gotta think it's a lot different feel. It, it is a lot, and I'd never drove a truck. But in talking to Elliot Sadler, who has driven both, it, it is a big difference in that. And I think that in talking to these drivers and trying to make this type of, of drafting work right here. Even though there's work on the part of the driver in front, it's not nearly as difficult as what it is with the driver behind. Not being able to see and trying to know exactly where you're trying to push this uh, driver in front of you. Here's Ricky versus Trevor. Roush Fenway Racing teammates, the defending series champion Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the six and the Daytona 500 defending winner Trevor Bain in the 60. That's a young man that caught on to this tandem style drafting. Uh, Trevor Baines just incredible down here last year and I think it probably got more notice uh, obviously in the Cup Series and we knew he was going to be a factor in the Daytona 500. I don't know that any of us thought that he might win it but we knew that he was going to help somebody win it and what he do help himself. Yeah I figure he's such a good pusher you see he's in this position right now on, on Stenhouse. He pushes about as good as anybody I've ever seen. I figured who would win the Daytona 500 last year would be whoever was in front yeah. of Trevor Bain and it was going to be David Reagan until he got penalized. Practice is not just about how the car performs on the racetrack. It's sometimes thinking out these processes of drafting, too. This is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and his spotter, Mike Kalanoff. What do you think about when we switch from 150 yards before we get to the corner? Do you think that'll make the transition smooth, you know, smoother, that you can line up better? Probably so. I mean, like, if you do it before you get in the corner, that way you have the corner uh, while the cars are loaded up to get hooked back. You got a little longer to do that, so probably so. But one of the reasons why Ricky Stenhouse and his spotter had time to talk about things was because they were sitting down on pit road for about 15 or 20 minutes waiting for their teammate Trevor Bain to come out in the 60 car. Trevor's uh, team was making a change to his car. He was sitting here in the garage. They were working on the car. Ricky was sitting on pit road. They tried to hustle as much as they could because they wanted to use this time. But Ricky had to wait quite a while before his teammate got out there. Guys. Hi Dave. Thanks. 
and uh, seeing just that little burst of water out the overflow from that 60 car there back in uh, turns one and two. Yeah, the driver can see that, and uh, it's not it's not a big problem if you have a little bit of that water that comes out of there. It just makes that driver really pay attention to that water temp gauge. See, just it, it just blows that pressure valve just a little bit every every now and then. Yeah, but I can assure you, when you're sitting there running almost 200 miles an hour, that little bit looks like a whole <laughs> lot. So that's what makes it so difficult to comprehend exactly how much water you have lost. I think you've driven into a monsoon. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, instead, I, instead of swapping, though, you see Trevor moving, just, just kind of offsetting more to get some air to the grill. I have to imagine that when you're the guy that's in the push car in this tandem and you're concentrating so hard on trying to stay properly lined up to not spin the guy out in front of you, that taking the time to look down at that water gauge and see where you are is, is maybe not the first thing on your mind. No, absolutely not. You don't want to do that. And that's why they came up with these type systems to where you don't have to look there as much. You get that little bit uh, of notice whenever uh, it blows a little of that water out. So, yeah, you don't want to take your eyes away from there. That split second could be the one that gets you in trouble and a your lot partner of in front. Yeah. yeah. Final race of last season was won by Brad Keselowski in this nationwide series. Haven't seen much of him on the track in this practice, Jamie. Well, we saw him running with his teammate, Sam Hornish Jr., just a little bit, and he pulled it in, and I spoke to him, and he said there was a weird sound coming from the engine and a vibration. So you see his new crew chief is the guy there in the black and red on the left. That's Jeremy Bullens. I asked him, and he said they have no idea. They're going through everything with a fine-tooth comb right now, trying to figure out what the issue was. And in the meantime, you see Brad Keselowski standing around waiting to get back in the car. Stop. Thank you, Jamie. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just radioing in in that practice session. He looked down and had no oil pressure, zero, on the five car. And he quickly shut it off and came coasting down. Pit Road has now brought it back in the garage area. They stopped at the end of the garage and fired the car up, and it seemed to fire and be running okay for a few seconds. And now what they are going to do is uh, they brought him back here. They think it's probably a bad oil sending unit. They were messing with the uh, pressure relief valve and water area in the front of the engine, which is right adjacent to the oil sending unit. They're hoping it's simply a bad sending unit. I mean, that's the unit that sends the signal to the gauges to tell you what the oil pressure is. And so they hope the engine's fine, the unit probably faulty, they hope that's all it is. They're checking right now, and we'll let you know. Alan? Well, that'll scare you to death. You know, look down, no oil pressure, and the only good outcome in this investigation will be finding a gauge that's not working right, because if anything else, if the car really did not have oil pressure, they'll have to take the engine out of the car. Bigger penalty at other tracks than it might be here at Daytona with the draft. If you change the engine, you start at the back of the field. But with Earnhardt Jr. in a fast race car in the draft, he, he probably yeah. could find a way to get He'd closer make it to the up front. pretty quick. The, the big thing is, you know, they probably have their best engine in the car. Yeah. Yep. 87 car is Joe Nemechek. That's a familiar look. 81 car is not a familiar look. That is Jason Bowles, one of a handful of drivers who are going to compete for the Nationwide Series Rookie of the Year this year. Bowles became known on the national scene a lot through success in the uh, NASCAR k and West Series. Looking to make his sixth Nationwide Series start. He is uh, a 29-year-old. And uh, that is the Randy McDonald Motorsports Team, the 81. Final practice ongoing for the NASCAR Nationwide Series after they worked together in the draft on the track. Elliot Sadler and his young teammate Austin Dillon talking it over and trying to advance that next step forward in their drafting. Tonight, tip off All Star Weekend with a little stargazing. Go courtside as some of the biggest names in entertainment join forces with NBA legends. It's the Sprint NBA All Star Celebrity Game on ESPN, ESPN3, and also streaming live at WatchESPN.com and the WatchESPN app. That's tomorrow at 7 Eastern from Orlando. Talk about a big sports scene in Central Florida, right? Got yeah. the Speed Weeks. Uh, wrapping up with Sunday's Daytona 500 and then the NBA All-Star Game Sunday night, just a uh, 45-minute drive down the road. Although I guess maybe in race traffic it might take a little longer. I would say with the amount of people that are going to be here on Sunday afternoon. Stenhouse Jr. and Bain back out for another run. 
Kyle Busch has been so dominant in this nationwide series last few years in the Joe Gibbs racing car but he has stepped out on his own this year and how are things going for Kyle Busch Motorsports today Dave. Well pretty well I think well enough that uh, Kyle in a casual mood has come back over to the 18 and the, the team said yeah he misses us already so he's uh, checking in on them seeing what's going on and I think trying to get some secret information from uh, nationwide series director uh, Steve D'Souza there what do you tell you. He told me he reads the tape measure in the big blocks and doesn't read any of the little numbers in between. He asks for engineer's help when he gets to that point. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, uh, seriously now, though, your car that you own has been on the track with you behind the wheel. Uh, what's it been like? You took 18 laps in the first session this morning. Yeah, it was good. Everything was felt really nice with the uh, Monster Energy Camry. Uh, car was good. Just did a little bit of drafting with uh, Casey Kane, did a little bit with my brother, and then just kind of seeing how long we could push, what the RPMs were like, you know, what our temperatures were and all that stuff and called it good. We felt pretty good about it. We didn't want to push it too much more and um, didn't want to be out there at the wrong time and uh, take a chance at wrecking it. So we're good. We'll just get ourselves qualified tomorrow. And uh, if we if we do qualify tomorrow, hopefully weather holds out for us. And um, if not, we'll uh, take a pass champs and race on Saturday. If you're the car at the back, how long do you think you can push based on what you learned this morning? Uh, we were seeing about two, two and a half laps. That's that's pretty pretty much it. You know, we've seen some guys pushing some water. We didn't go that far, but uh, we were right on the verge. Okay. And a lot of people want to know too. How different is it than the Cup side? This drafting over here. Uh, it, it's quite a bit different, actually. You know, over here it seems I don't know if it's because of bigger radiator tanks that we can push a little bit longer, but over there. You're already running like 220, 230 in the draft, and then you push for a lap, and you're like 245, 250. You know, so it it's already um, you're kind of pushing the limits. You know, right away. We're over here. You got a little bit of time, so it's good though. It helps our costs. You know, we already had bought all the radiator stuff, so it would have hurt if we would have had to. They don't give you refunds. No, no refunds. I would love the refund or a rebate or something, but they don't give those. So um, you buy it, it's yours. You own it, and. Um, you know, part of ownership, I guess. I was going to say, you're thinking like an owner now. And don't forget, you have to go back to your car eventually. You can't stay over here the whole time. Oh, I'll go back over there. I just stay hi to the guys and uh, see what Brian Scott's up to here in a minute. See if I can't razz him a little bit. Denny's already gone. Denny's in and out, man. He's a, he's a quick mover. In fact, Alan, as I throw it back to you and let Kyle go, uh, Denny is not in this car, even though this is the first time that Denny will have raced this style of nationwide car on the super speedway. Um, they called their not, car. Not because he wants to either. Because <laughs> you stole all the rides earlier, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't like the restrictor plate stuff. He didn't want to do that. But since I got out of it, now he's got to get in it. All right, calling him out. Uh, the team says that Denny said it was good at the end of the first session, and uh, the crew chief said, I don't want to take a risk with the car. So that's why Denny's not out here, according to the team anyway. Alan. There you go, Dave. Thanks. Dale, you at one time owned your own NASCAR Nationwide Series team while you were a Sprint Cup driver. Kyle Busch is winning all kind of races, driving for Joe Gibbs, but he takes on the burden, I'll call it, of ownership, and he's going to drive his own stuff with his brother Kurt this year. Motivation for doing that. Uh, <laughs> you start to question after a while. No, it, it really is something. Obviously, mine was a little different situation. I built it from the start of the Bush Series. But I found that there were a lot of things that, that I could do as an owner and a driver in this series that, that helped me to be better at, at, at a lot of different things. I stayed in touch with the cars because I had my office at the race shop so I could stay in touch with the cars, actually literally go work on them, see different things that we were doing, and that helped me. There was obviously a, a financial gain, or hopefully there was, <laughs> and an opportunity. And I looked at that, that I was building that race team to someday take to uh, the cup level. And uh, I was at that point through 1995 of ready to do that uh, when Robert Yates offered me to, to stay there. And he was going to start his second team in 1996 with the 88 car. And of course, that was a wonderful decision and an opportunity that it came along with. But, you know, you're always looking for challenges uh, in different ways. It's a great way to, to hone your business skills uh, along with your, your driving skills and mechanical skills. Be a fascinating to see the level of success that Kyle and his brother Kurt have with that team this year, and uh, them being teammates in, in, in itself is going to be one of the fascinating stories of the Nationwide Series 2012. Should give us plenty to talk about, I would think. Think so. Uh, Danica Patrick will also campaign full time in the Nationwide Series 2012, as well as a number of NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races. Get ready to go back out for another run on the racetrack after uh, reevaluating where she stood after the last effort.
That was pretty good, I thought. I was really, I felt like I could run there for a long time. I mean, I was I was giving it some, you know, he was nice and smooth, he did a good job. I came off him just for a second because I came across his rear pretty far in three and four and he dropped the brake right away and we just stayed hooked up, so that was good. And Also, when Danica was in the garage prior to this run, she was communicating with her spotter guys about how he, the spotter, is communicating with Cole Witt's spotter about how and when uh, Witt and Danica were swapping those drafting positions and also communicating with Tony Urie Jr. about whether she was faster pushing or being pushed. And Tony Urie Jr. informed her she was about two tenths quicker when she was pushing Cole Witt. Very technical discussion from Danica. You can tell she's still learning, but she's grasping it so much more each time she comes here to Daytona. I also see a little bit more confidence in Danica just just from having that experience and that's obviously it comes with more you know the confidence comes with the experience and she's just got a lot of laps here and now I don't think there's uh, you know too many drivers that, that know more about this style of race. It's a different race driver than what we've seen here in the past and she's here to race and and have a chance at winning this race and she you're, as you said Andy that, that confidence can go a long way. She's out here on a single car run right now and I've been watching some of these cars that have made just single car runs. It looks like about a 4970 is a really good lap. We'll see how she stacks up here. Uh, they usually will run in that you know, 50, 20 or 30 on the first lap, 4970 on the second lap. That's the best ones I've seen. And it's the first lap of her practice qualifying run, running up high in the second lap. She'll have the car right down on the yellow line around the bottom of the racetrack, like we'll see in our qualifying coverage tomorrow. We haven't seen a lot of cars make single car runs. Man. I don't really know really till qualifying happens who really has the car to beat but I like to always kind of keep up with these single car runs just see what the lap times look like and just by way of refresher why you run the car around the top the first lap and around the bottom of the second lap yeah with these restrictor plates it takes time to, to get the car up to speed up to its full potential and sometimes you can't even hardly do it in two laps but you're making the racetrack as long as possible to get those rpms up and be able to sustain that yes you're in 50 55 on the first lap we're looking for, you know, like I said, anything down below 50 seconds on this lap would be a pretty good lap. Yeah, and it's generally somewhere between six and eight tenths pickup of uh, what we see, depending on the gear, gear that they may choose. Well, Earnhardt Jr. and Brad Keselowski both back out on the racetrack. Jamie, how about the 22? Well, as I just reported uh, a little while ago, Brad Keselowski, last time out when he was running with his teammate Sam Hornish Jr., he felt a vibration and heard a weird sound. So he went back out. The team told me they found nothing wrong, so they were just going to turn it off, wait a little while, see if that helped. And so Brad said, well, let me hook up with Dale Jr. and see if the same thing happened. So the two, Brad started out pushing Dale, and now he's in front, and so far it seems okay, but we're listening. For more on the five, let's go over to Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you, Jamie. And as you might surmise, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s engine is just fine. I've reported he had zero oil pressure, no oil pressure. He shut it off, came in. The Hendrick engine builders checked the engine. He had plenty of oil pressure. They think it was the oil sending unit or the gauge. Either way, it was electrical. The engine itself is fine, which is the good news. They said, go on back out there and practice, Jr. He's on the track with a little drafting practice there with Brad K. Alan? Hi, Doc. Thanks. Of course, uh, Brad Keselowski formerly driving for Junior Motorsports on his way up the uh, NASCAR ladder. So these two very comfortable around each other, know each other quite well. Trevor Bain, the defending Daytona 500 winner, very popular figure with the fans around these parts as he gets ready for Saturday's NASCAR Nationwide Series 300 miler. Live at the Daytona International Speedway, ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series beginning for 2012 with final practice as teams make their preparations for Saturday's season opening 300 miler. It's going to be about 82 degrees this afternoon. Don't know what the weather's like where you are, but it's awfully nice here at the World Center of Racing for Speed Weeks 2012. Yeah, Tony Stewart just finished making a single car run. She ran a 50.13, which is just a little bit slower than Danica. She actually ran a 49.95 on her single car run. You can see how much difference there is in drafting. That's what his fastest lap has been, a 46.54 versus a lap by yourself there. 
if you're going to pick an in-race reporter for a race, would you like a guy that's won it four times in a row and is going for five in a row and is the defending Sprint Cup champion? That's the guy I want to hear from. That's who we're going to hear from on Saturday. Tony Stewart's our in-race reporter. Got a question? You'd like to suggest uh, that we ask Smoke? ESPN.com and look for in-race reporter. Tony's well, always entertaining and insightful and in those opportunities that we have, we love talking with him and appreciate him taking the time and making the effort to do it. So we're beginning to see now teams have made the transition from drafting practice to getting ready for their qualifying run tomorrow afternoon. Cole Witt just finishing up a single car run. And that's about the quickest single car run I've seen, a 49-61. Now, as we've gone through our coverage of this final practice, you've seen a lot of big names and kind of the top brand teams for the Nationwide Series. Well, there's a reason for that. They're the ones doing all the practicing. A lot of the smaller teams have not run a lot of laps in this practice because they can't take a chance. No, you just can't. They, they can't afford it. They've got one good speedway car. Uh, and we've seen, uh, you've seen what happened in some of the practice sessions. Casey Kane wrecked his car yesterday in practice. You just don't want to take a chance. I mean, it's, it, and there's not a lot to be gained. I mean, they go out here and practice. You're not trying to tune the car to make speed because it, the speed's kind of built into the car. The only thing you want to practice for is to see, you know, how, how, you know, the technique for the two-car draft. How long can you run before you start blowing water out? All of these things. All, that's all you can learn. You can't make the car faster by practicing. Here. An example of this group of drivers, last year's Rookie of the Year, who's only run eight laps, Jamie. And he's talking to his drafting partner and teammate Blake Cook right now, Timmy Hill. Of course, you guys, you didn't return many laps together, but you got some damage on here. Doing a nice job, Blake see the damage down here on the right side of the bumper and as well on the front. What did you guys learn running together so far? You know, from last year, the cars run a lot hotter now. The grill opening is a lot taller. And uh, but Blake and I went out and tested it, see how many laps you could run. And we got three or four good laps. And um, as you can see, the main thing is trying to hang the car off the right side of the car, get as much air in the grill as possible. But uh, for myself and the point that I come forward, we're all doing great and uh, got a good time. We're 18th and 19th on the board. It's awesome. Uh, we only ran like four or five laps, which that's awesome. Blake and I are really working good together, good teammates. That's good to have. Probably look for a couple more guys just for backup plans, but Blake and I are really working well. All right, Timmy Hill's going to be actually 19 on race day. And Blake, you're going to take over and you're going to run full time this year. How good does that feel coming into Daytona to have that plan? Well, it feels awesome. Just blessed to have this ride by Rick Ware Racing. And uh, Timmy's like an awesome teammate. Last year when we were pushing each other, it was like I wanted him to do good, but then again we were competing for Rookie of the Year, so it's like how am I going to get around him? It's like I'm glad I'm pushing him, but then again I'm glad I'm not. So it's good now that we're teammates on the same team with the same goal, and he's going to do great on the cup side. Really excited to watch him. All right, some of the young faces to keep an eye on, Doc. And one of those small teams back here, Tommy Baldwin Racing, has one car, one engine, and one 19-year-old driver in Ryan Truex. And Ryan, you haven't been on the track but just a few laps today. What's the agenda for this team? Well, you know, as we, as you know, we're a small team, so we uh, got to make it in on time. So we got to do some qualifying rounds. We've done three or four now, and these guys are working hard. I mean, they built a nice car. We got ECR motors, so we got good power, and we got a good sponsor. But unfortunately, it's not on there yet. Um, it was kind of a last-minute deal. Grind Boss, you can go grindboss.com, check it out. And uh, yeah, we need to get our car wrapped, and we'll have it ready for qualifying, and hopefully we can make the race. Well, the focus is to get the car fast, then get it wrapped later, so the sponsor comes, even though they're very important. But now, let's talk about this year with you. Last year, 17 races here, an impressive fourth-place run, a great run from the back of the field at Richmond. What about 2012? What do you hope to do? I hope to go out and win races, but I need a race car to do that, and I need sponsors, and I need help. I mean, you know, we went out with Gibbs, had six races last year, and had four top tens, I think, all top 15s, so qualified in the top five every time I mean you know I feel like I've done everything to earn you know earn my way here it's just it's just tough how the economy is right now and, and being young and everyone you know wants cup drivers in their cars it's it's really tough for a guy like me but I'm just working hard at it and you know work my tail off to get here so hopefully it works out good luck this weekend thank you a 19 year old Ryan Truex younger brother of Martin Truex Jr. and uh, Alan he says you got to be in the garage area to be seen because if you're out of sight you're out of mind in NASCAR hoping to be here get seen and maybe uh, get in some other rides here as the year evolves. That is so true, Doc. There's Richard Childress talking to Tony Stewart. Of course, Stewart driving for Richard Childress in this nationwide series race as he goes for a fifth consecutive win. Richard Childress taking over the all of the nationwide equipment from Kevin Harvick Incorporated this year. Getting back into the series in a big way. 
And like we said before, RC will have an eye on his Nationwide Series program this year very steadily because his grandson is driving for it. 50 is TJ Bell, 81 car is Jason Bowles, the 70 is Johanna Long, 19 years old, 19 years old. Yeah, but she's pretty good. I, I talked to her down in the garage area and uh, talking about her experience that she's had. She's raced a lot of late models and you know, the biggest thing on her resume is winning the Snowball Derby against some of the very best short track racers in the country. And uh, so we talked about that a little bit and then talked about, you know, she's run some truck series races and got some experience there, but she's really looking forward to getting in this series and racing the car. That's a great opportunity, as we said at the top of the show, you know, the opportunity is out there. You know, obviously getting with the right team and having the funding uh, makes a big difference, just as Ryan Truex was talking about getting that opportunity to be in top notch equipment. He has proven, by the way, that he can race with these guys. And I, but I did have to kind of chuckle to myself and listen to him talk about it, it was almost a desperate sound. And he's 19 years old. I, I, I think back and you know, all I can compare it to is my career. I didn't drive a race car the first time until I was 20 years old. So they're, they're already feeling like that they're behind at 19 by not being able to be there. But that's just uh, the way the sport is this day and time. They're on a fast pace. 21 races planned for 19 year old Johanna Long in that uh, 70 car for ML Motorsports this season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Final practice ongoing, Elliot Sadler. Looking like uh, making some adjustments inside the cockpit of that car to have it just right for racing. We are watching Casey Kane at Daytona International Speedway just off the pit lane to begin a practice qualifying run. Final practice for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Qualifying is tomorrow, and the season opener 300-mile race at Daytona is Saturday starting at noon Eastern on ESPN. Casey aboard this 38 car for Turner Motorsports this year with long time, long time Nationwide Series sponsor, the Great Clips. See his best lap, single car is right there at 50 flat, 49.99. Like he's gonna make another run here, see if he can better it. Talk about things that are different for this year, besides Casey splitting this car with Brad Sweet, Mike Shiplett has signed on as crew chief for this team. Of course, Shiplett and Kane working together at the former Gillette Motorsports Sports operation a couple of years ago. certainly looking different this year than what they did. Yeah. Big splash last year with a number of cars, but a much smaller effort, but hopefully that will uh, generate uh, some more trips to victory lane. I just thinking about uh, Casey Kane's week so far in the Sprint Cup Series and debating whether to bring it up or not, but here's a young man that's had a tough week so far. <laughs> Uh, he has. Involved uh, in an incident in the Budweiser shootout last uh, Saturday night, then involved in an incident in Sprint Cup practice here yesterday, so they've gone through two cup cars yeah. and haven't even gotten to the qualifying races. Yeah, <laughs> and just a couple of weeks ago, right before the season's getting ready to start, he had to have surgery on his knees, so he wasn't planning on that. So it's been a tough couple of weeks for him so far. He'll straighten it out. We were following uh, Johanna Long a little while ago on the track and they were spread out this group that she was in they were trying to get together and learn some of this tandem racing and yeah, they've been in a little group trying to run together and it was not working I and mean, they were running in the 50 mid 50 second bracket and that is not going to get it done so you see them trying to experiment and it's uh they got away with it but it, didn't, yeah. it wasn't pretty as jason bowles in the 81 car and uh, he had a hard time locking on. Yeah, we talk about the handling of the cars not being a big issue because they have a lot of downforce and things, and the track still has a lot of grip, as we see Morgan Shepard going here now. But you, you still, if you don't have the front end setting exactly right, the car will move around some on its own, and that makes it very difficult for the driver trying to push to follow where you're going. Still going. And going. Morgan Shepard. Back for another go at Daytona. A place where he's enjoyed a fair amount of success over many years. 
And Morgan out making a couple of practice laps to get ready for qualifying in his 89 car. Saw Joey Logano make uh, a practice qualifying effort a little bit ago. Vince? Well, Joey, how was it? Uh, not bad. The uh, game stop toad is pretty good. We've been working with Smoke uh, throughout the practice. We're going to work with each other in the race. So, um, Oreos and, and video games, the GameStop. It, it don't get no better than that, right? Sounds like a great combination to me. Sounds good. It sounds good. So uh, we'll see what happens. We just went out there and uh, scuffed a couple sets of tires, make sure her tires didn't vibrate or anything like that. And uh, she's good to go. She's ready to race. So uh, we'll qualify tomorrow and hopefully win the bad boy. How do you decide who you're going to pair up with? You mentioned that uh, you and Smoke have been working together. Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of go with, I mean, for me, I was kind of thinking who I worked best with. Uh, you know, um, I did work with Kyle in the past, obviously. Uh, he's working with his brother. Uh, the next guy on my list was Tony. Uh, we worked good together in the past in the Cup Series. And um, he seemed to do pretty good in this Daytona track in this Nationwide Series. So I was thinking that'd be the next best guy and uh, lucky enough that he's going to go with me. So um, we're going to work fine together. It seemed like in practice we already had, uh, you know, we can't communicate through each other, but um, you can kind of talk with your car a little bit, and uh, it seemed like all that was fine. So uh, I think we're on the same page about when we want to go hard and when we're going to just hang out, and uh, we'll kind of see what happens. Now, working with a guy that's won four in a row is a good call. Well done. Good call, yeah. <laughs> Alan? They talked a lot about Tony Stewart that Delegato was referencing there, but the most recent race winner in this nationwide series at Daytona is that young man. Joey Logano. Remember, he had a, a problem, started at the back, then got in this spin early in the race last July 1st. Thought it was all over right there, but he saved it. You can see him putting a little bit of Vaseline on the nose. That's when NASCAR used to let him do that so they wouldn't turn each other sideways into bump draft. Regroup, got to that massive chaos, chaotic finish ahead of all of them for the win. It is fine to be in Florida in February. Beautiful Daytona Beach, where the history of this town's love affair with the automobile began with speed trials on the beach many, many years ago. At Daytona International Speedway, Lake Lloyd shimmering in the background, the dirt they dug out to make the banking of this massive speedway in 1958. First Daytona 500 held in 1959, and the first race for what is now the Nationwide Series, they called it Late Model Sportsman then, held on the day before the very first Daytona 500. Look what it's become now. Right in the middle of all this is the uh, NASCAR Nationwide Series garage. Brad Keselowski has just driven out of there and onto the racetrack. Jamie Little reports from there. And Alan, a couple runs ago, Brad Keselowski said he had a vibration. Well, the team has gone over and over the car. Finally, they found the culprit. It was a bad spark plug. So for more and to help explain it, let's go to the ESPN Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. And Tim, I want to know, how does a bad spark plug lead to a vibration? Because if all of those cylinders are not firing, Jamie, one of them's really just not efficient, it's going to rattle the engine. What a guy has to do, we're always monitoring the, the fuel flow, the distribution in the engine. But what you have to do when you're putting the, the plug wires on, you have to make sure that they're connected properly. But when the guys are putting the spark plugs in with a socket and a ratchet, this is a cutaway spark plug right here. All this is porcelain down through here. If you damage the porcelain in any way, it's not going to conduct the power to the cylinder. It's not going to fire the cylinder. Therefore, you're going to be running around there. You're not going to have a lot of horsepower, and the engine will vibrate. A.B.? Tim, thanks. Problem solved for Keselowski in the 22, so he's out there on a practice qualifying run and uh, seeing where he stacks up here. Yeah, a lot of times not that simple. It's usually <laughs> yeah. something down, down deep in the engine that you can't fix that easily, but uh, they got lucky there that it was just a spark plug. So let's see, we've had the 22 have a potential problem that turned out to be relatively simple. We had Earnhardt Jr. in the five. With a potentially a big problem yeah, that turned, turned out, out to be nothing. Switch in one, gonna switch in one when you get back over here. Here's Austin Dillon in the three and Elliot Sadler in the two, again working on that tandem drafting. This is their second attempt at it. They went out, did the drafting with each one of them, uh, taking each position in front and behind. Then they went in and had a discussion about uh, how they could be better at it, more efficient, make more speed. See how that works for them now. So you little okay, water. we're switch down here. Just remember what y'all talked about there. Yeah, just a little water you can see coming out of the overflow on Elliott Sadler's car, so they're going to make that switch. And have discussed between them earlier which way the switch was going to be. Yeah, they knew that Elliott went all the way across uh, Austin Dillon's bumper, but you could see they getting attached 
very quickly. Ellie's very good at, get, at doing that. He has to drag the brake a little in the two bounding. car to get that three car attached to him. Now they'll be making uh, maximum speed once again very shortly. Hooked up real good. RC looking on. You know, you talk about him having a vested interest in this. Yes, he's put a lot into this, and, and certainly he wants his grandson to do well, but he wants Elliot Sadler too also. They've been friends for a long time. They have a great sponsor in one main financial, and that's the kind of things that you want to keep around. So he realized that he needs to put a forth a huge effort for them. Yeah, this two-car team is not, the car looks the same as it did last year, but it's not the same team as it was when it was at KHI. Uh, they've got a lot of different players over there. Most of these team members are from Kevin Harvick's old cup team. Uh, you see a lot of those faces over there. And Luke Lambert, he's a young engineer on the team that was uh, became crew chief for Jeff Burton on the 31 team and now moved over to Elliott Sadler's team as a crew chief. So got a lot of new things going on, and I think the optimism is really high over there. When we saw after they made the switch, the contact there is Austin Dillon and Elliott Sadler. Their cars were bouncing and bouncing and bouncing trying to get together. This is shot from earlier in the garage. Look at what it does to the back bumpers of these cars. Yeah, you'd think it'd actually do more damage. They, they brace these rear bumpers up pretty well. I, uh, you know, they've extended that lower edge of that rear bumper to try to maybe make these cars race in a pack, kind of like the Sprint Cup cars, but uh, it's not, you know, they didn't do all of the things that they did with Sprint Cup cars to make that happen. And you really hope that you don't get that what I call gouging there. You, you hope that it's more of something just wearing across there, but that came from a little inexperienced, running up a little bit hard and sliding across the bumper a little bit too much. By way of review, since we've been on the air for nearly 90 minutes, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, we will see this tandem drafting in Saturday's race, unlike the Sprint Cup Series. NASCAR made a lot of rule changes to the Sprint Cup cars to force these two car drafts apart and create the big pack draft. But because of cost considerations, they made some rule changes but not all of the rule changes for the Nationwide Series, and they're able to keep the cars cooler longer so they can do this style of drafting. Do the big things. You can see it right there. That rear spoiler on the Nationwide car is really tall, makes a lot of downforce, makes a big hole in the air. So when you get these two cars hooked up in this tandem draft, there's a lot of speed gained. Right there was a little, little bit of a potential problem. Now see, that in the, cup, in the Cup Series could actually have caused somebody to spin out because they don't have the rear downforce that these cars do. Then the other thing, like I said, Alan, is that capacity of the cooling system a lot higher on these cars. So they can run a lot longer before the car gets hot. When he gets ready to hit me, just drag the brake just a little bit so I don't, you don't melt me so bad. I think we'll get hooked up a little quicker. The schooling continues. Learning process, and, and Austin Dillon is very fortunate to have someone like Elliott Sadler that is very good at this racing. He, fin he has finished second in the Daytona 500. He understands this type of racing too. So Elliott Sadler and Austin Dillon working on their dual drafting as NASCAR Nationwide Series final practice continues, getting ready for Saturday's season opening 300 mile. Tomorrow night, tip off All-Star Weekend with a little stargazing. Go courtside as some of the biggest names in entertainment join forces with NBA legends. It's the Sprint NBA All-Star Celebrity Game on ESPN, ESPN3, and streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app tomorrow at 7 Eastern from Orlando. And from Daytona Beach, it is final practice for the NASCAR Nationwide Series ongoing here at Daytona International Speedway. Back in the garage is the man who's posted the fastest lap of the practice so far, and Vince is with him. Casey Kane running the 38 car for Turner Motorsports, splitting the ride with uh, young Brad Sweet this year, but uh, you're in it for Daytona. How's the uh, day been so far in the Nationwide car? Felt good. Um Great clip Chevrolet had a lot of speed by itself and in the draft. We, I did some stuff with James in the 30 car, another Turner Motorsports car, and actually felt really good with him. Worked with Kyle and Dale Jr. a little bit and um, felt good. It was definitely felt better than what we were here last year at Daytona. So it's, uh, I think Turner Motorsports, the guys have done a really nice job to, to prepare some, some fast and uh, pretty solid cars. Obviously, we're seeing the two-car tandem here on the nationwide side, more pack racing on the cup side. I know you had an incident yesterday. What's the difference from a driver's perspective of the two different styles of racing? Well, I feel like 
these uh, these cars are much more stable. The the bigger spoiler, uh, much more stable, and the and the water you can control better on these cars. Our our Hendrick engine runs great, but you can control the water a little bit better. The temperature compared to the Cup side, they got us so restricted that it's hard to to keep them from getting hot. So you have to run more in that pack, but. It's tough to say. Saturday, the heat and um, the bigger pack. I think we'll, we're definitely going to be learning some things early in that race because it's kind of an unknown right now. We haven't ran in a pack yet in these cars. Good luck, Casey Kane. Alan, fastest lap so far in the Turner Motorsports 38 car for Casey Kane. Another one of that team's machines, Justin Allgaier in the 31, out there with the 52 car, and that is Reed Sorensen behind the wheel of that 52 machine. Jimmy Means car. These are some of the first laps. You can see all the sparks flying out in the back of Allgaier's car. This is a, some of the first laps he has run in a tandem. He's been doing a lot of single car runs. Interesting that Reed Sorensen was a teammate of Justin Allgaier's. Now kind of um, scratching for a ride. Yeah, how quickly things can change. You know, we were at Atlanta last September. He was in the battle, in the hunt for the championship. Had an incident with Justin Allgaier, his teammate there, yep. that set him back, and then uh, things went really south from that point. So these two working together in the draft here. And Reed Sorensen, one of those guys with uh, really nothing to lose and a lot to gain in this race this weekend. I talked to Jimmy Elliott, though, the crew chief on Justin Allgaier's car. Felt like that they're really going to have a, a good run at the championship this year because they found some things, you know, with the engine and some downforce things that they feel like they're going to be a lot better on into the season. They're back and they're still working on it. <laughs> Austin Dillon in the three, Elliot Sadler in the two. Austin, you're, you're, you need to you need to like uh, start blending earlier before you get in the middle of the corner. You're at the you're at the lightest place in the corner when y'all swap right there. You need to do it about the Sunoco about the Sunoco sign there, getting into three and getting into one. Yeah, that's good advice, and you can make that. What they're trying to do is not get either one of them in a bad position. We saw right before we went to break last time that as Elliot was pushing the three car that he waited a little bit long and carried that momentum down into the corner uh, I almost made for a bad situation and so you can make that transition earlier get hooked back up quicker and lose less time so austin dillon going to come back around come back into the garage and he and elliot sadler will reconvene and talk it out some more as the final moments of final practice for the nascar nationwide series at daytona 2012 roll on Back live, Daytona International Speedway with a look at the fastest speeds posted in NASCAR Nationwide Series practice. Now remember, those laps are probably not the single car qualifying run laps. Those are done in the tandem draft. Casey Kane, James Busher, they were drafting together. And fourth on that list, David Reagan, who is driving in the 27 car here in Saturday's race stock. And now, the last time David Reagan was here in a stock car, let's turn back the clock to last July. The night race here, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race final laps, and David Reagan driving for Roush Fenway. What a night as he goes to victory lane and celebrates here at Daytona. And every time David now walks through or drives through the tunnel, he remembers standing in victory lane holding that trophy. And David, thanks for coming out and chatting with us. Uh, special memories for you. Now, you're, you're with a very small team. A lot of experience as a driver. You're fourth quickest on the grid. Is this team a legitimate contender to win on Saturday? Absolutely. We can put ourselves in position to win. You know, the, the GC racing team uh, called me. We talked some over the offseason. Uh, they run Fords. We've got a great Roush Yates engine in our Ford this weekend. Uh, Certainty, Mercury boats on the side. So we've uh, well, we've put together a pretty good effort to come down to Daytona. You know, this is the, the biggest race of the of the year for the Nationwide Series. So, you know, I wanted to be in it as a driver. And uh, Ricky Byers, uh, Wayne Grubb, and these guys, they've got a, uh, a nice car prepared. It drives good. Um, it, it drafts well. So, absolutely, we can put ourselves in position to try to win this thing on Saturday. 
Well, that bodes a question, and who do you draft with? you got to have a drafting partner here in Nationwide. We're going to see a lot of tandem two-by-two. Two. Any, any ideas? Have you made any deals so far? You know, we'll see where we qualify at. I went out some with Kurt Busch in the uh, second practice and, and ran some together just to, to make sure our temperatures and we could, you know, our mirrors and everything was right. But, um, you know, obviously the Cup guys will, will have some good experience with each other, but then there's some really good Nationwide teams uh, that are going to have some fast cars. You know, Kenny Wallace, uh, you know, Reed Sorensen's a good speedway racer so uh, there's going to be somebody that we can hook up with we'll ultimately see where we qualify and uh, have a good strategy for the race we want to be there at the end we're not going to you know take advantage and, and run this car into the ground early in the race we want to be there and have a shot to win and uh, i've got a lot of confidence in these guys and i've had a lot of fun so i'm glad to be over here hey listen to this strategy now that the owners from canada the car was built in tennessee the engine was built in North Carolina. You're from Georgia, and you're racing in Florida. It's not like a recipe for victory here. You, I think we're going to be good on Saturday. Yeah, I don't know how we all got mixed up. That's, uh, you know, a, a Southern boy uh, hooking up with uh, with GC Racing, uh, you know, Steve Meehan out of Canada. Um, I guess there's a lot of people in between uh, South Georgia and, and Toronto. So it's been a lot of fun. And actually, this shop was prepared out of Wayne Day Shop in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, the same team that I drove some uh, ARCA races for several years ago. So it's kind of a homecoming for me and uh, it's good to be here on uh, NASCAR's biggest stage in the Nationwide Series. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Car to keep an eye on here, the 27 of David Reagan. Let's go over to Jamie Little. And Brad Kozlowski, he's finished for the day, and we uh, talked about you quite a bit. You had a little issue with a spark plug. What did the team tell you led to that going bad? Yeah, you know, we were out there working with my teammate, uh, Sam Hornish, and uh, I could just feel his, you know, the engine was laying down, and uh, luckily I felt really lucky that we didn't... Uh, wreck going in the corner because if uh, you know you slow down as a front car it uh, increases all the bumper pressure and you can really easily wreck so uh, you know we came back in checked it out and found some you know fouled spark plugs and uh, you know luckily uh, we think it was just some you know garbage in the fuel and uh, so went through that process and uh, seems to be running good now and uh, got to get back up there with Dale Jr. and uh, do a little bit of two car drafting the car seems really fast so uh, we'll see we should be in good shape for uh, for the race. And you're working with the new crew chief, Jeremy Bullens. He comes over from the 29 Cup car. He was an engineer there. What are your expectations? Well, you know, the uh, the Discount Tire Dodge team, this is uh, our third year here at Penske Racing and our third crew chief. So, uh, but it's all in a good way uh, because we're using this, you know, series as a tool to promote different people and, and give them opportunities. So I know Jeremy's excited because he knows if he runs well over here, the, the template is as such to where he'll get opportunities further in the company. and hopefully to you know make it to a crew chief status at the cup level so uh, you know it's, it's good change I think that's the most important thing it's a, it's an opportunity and uh, that's part of why I enjoy racing this series so much so uh, I think he brings a lot to the table being from Richard Childress racing and, and having a, a great year like they did with Kevin last year and uh, we're very fortunate to have him. All right Brad Keselowski busy weekend four races in four days and his first up is duel number one. Alan. All right, Jamie, thanks. We have followed a lot in our coverage of this final practice. The tutelage, Elliot Sadler with Austin Dillon. We'll hear from them on what they gained during final practice when we come back to Daytona. Back live to Daytona International Speedway and NASCAR Nationwide Series final practice for Saturday's 300 mile season opener. Most laps run in this practice. Well, it's Austin Dillon and Elliot Sadler who've been out there as the uh, tandem teammates and uh, put in a good bit of time working on perfecting their technique for Saturday's race. We uh, saw the two of them discussing it further out of the car a moment ago. Vince is uh, caught up with both of them now. Yeah, a lot of hand signals going on as they're talking about the mechanics of uh, uh, tandem racing out there. Elliot, when you're working with a young driver like Austin, what's the most important thing from your, uh, from your perspective for him to do to help you? Uh, first thing he's got to do is be comfortable. First thing I got to do is make sure I do everything to help him and put him in the right situations. And because it's not as easy as it looks on TV with the switching and the timing and getting hooked back up. I mean, there's a lot to it, and I think it just takes time. It takes practice. And that's what we, we just kept working on the switching, make sure we felt comfortable with him, make sure he's pushing me like I want to be pushed, make sure I'm pushing him like he wants to be pushed. So, you know, we got three restricted plate races this year in the nationwide series. So we just want to just build this chemistry and make sure we keep working good together and see where that takes us. How much more difficult is it that the two of you can't communicate together as compared to uh, what it's been like in the past? It's a ton different. It'd been a lot easier for him last year with us being on the same channel. Now we have to relay everything through our spotter. So it's a little bit of delay. So we got to learn to anticipate. I got to anticipate what he's going to do and he's got to do the same for me. 
and that's just going to take the more we work together that that's going to happen. Well Austin and Elliott said it's not as easy as it looks. I didn't think it looked all that easy to begin with. So from your perspective what's been the most difficult aspect of it. You know uh, I didn't have much tandem in, in any other series the truck series. I got a few laps at the end of uh, Talladega last year and just learning how to be behind somebody pushing. You're not seeing anything but the back bumper. You got to get comfortable relax and uh, listen to Elliott as much as I can. The more we work together I relaxed and I could work and push behind him and I was comfortable very comfortable at the end and the most thing is just being precise on the switches if we can be precise and get it down we'll be fine. Yeah look forward to this combination working on Saturday Alan. Richard Childress racing teammates Austin Dillon left Elliot Sadler right talking it out after final practice here at Daytona still a few minutes left of on track time for some of the drivers. The hard, wide, smooth sands of Daytona Beach proved to be perfect for seeing how fast your car could go back around the turn of the century. 1959, the action moved inland to Daytona International Speedway, where the Daytona 500 and Speed Weeks have been a tradition for so many years. 2012 version of that Speed Week tradition continuing this week's afternoon. They've got the twin 150 mile races to set the Daytona 500 starting field. Truck Series race Friday night and Saturday the season opener for the NASCAR Nationwide Series that you'll see live on ESPN starting at noon Eastern. And the final moments of final practice ticking away here at the uh, World Center of Racing. Waiting for the signal from atop the flag stand that uh, practice is done. Kevin Moss up there, got the flag in his hand. Yep, time's up. He's waiting on the last car to come across the line. Let him finish their lap here. And that'll probably do it for practice. There is Derek Cope, the 1990 Daytona 500 winner, trying to be the last one to get a last practice lap in. And he is going to be the one that sees the flag. And that's it. They started at 9 o'clock this morning with their first practice laps of the season. And now it's done. Two qualifying laps before the green flag are all that remain for the nationwide drivers and teams before we go racing on Saturday. These are five lap averages. So drafting work done by uh, drivers and teams. What do you think? Well, it's hard to tell that the practice times here are not so indicative of who's going to be the best, but uh, you still got to be able to run fast. Looks like James Busher is able to run plenty fast. Been a big winter for James Busher, and he's going to wind up today with a bench. What looks like a pretty sporty looking car for Saturday's race. Always nice to see your name atop the uh, standings in regards to speed. You were working with Casey Kane as Alan and uh, Andy were. Uh, noting how good was the combination with the two of you pushing one another. I think it's great. Uh, Casey and I uh, fired off did that one one drafting run and um, you know our, our FOE Chevy was was really fast um, pushing and being pushed. So I, I think it's a good combination for us and the guys at Turner Motorsports definitely did their homework over the off season and uh, you know built some good race cars. We got really fast cars across the board and uh, we'll see how fast the trucks are. I think you'll see the same thing in the truck garage. Uh, here in a little bit too so um, just just really pleased with the car and, and how well it's driving we only made the one drafting run and and one single car run in the first practice so um, you know I, I don't think we have a shot at the pole I, you know I think we'll get a decent starting spot but um, for whatever reason we just don't have that single car speed but when it gets in the draft the, the FOE Chevy is really fast so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the race and uh, you know talking with Casey I think we have a, a good package together you haven't done a lot of this type of running uh, with the tandem what concerns you once it comes race day? Uh, just just being able to be around the guys that, that you know will work with you. Um, you know, you, you make deals with guys and, and plan on working together, but it's all situational. So it's the luck of the draw. If if your drafting partner's 15th and you're running top five, you know, because of pit strategy or whatever, you know, you try to get on the same pit strategy, but if you hang a lug nut or, or you know, anything can happen, it, if it's five laps to go, you're not going to drop to the back and go get that guy. You, you know, you want him to be next to you so you can work together because you work together so well. But uh, when it comes down to the end, it's, it's situational. So if we're lucky, we'll be together and, and be able to work together. Um, you know, that's the plan. But I think uh, I think if it comes down to it, you got to go with whoever's next to you at the end of the race. And, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it's one of my teammates. He's a championship contender in the truck series, Allen, and he's pretty darn fast in the nationwide car today.
and mentioned it was a big offseason for James. He got married during the offseason as well. If you're familiar with the story of how NASCAR came to be, Bill France moved his family from Washington, D.C. to Daytona Beach. He was in the service station business right there when he began racing on the beach. NASCAR Nationwide Series Practice is brought to you by Captain Morgan. Raise your glass, always in moderation. And FreeCreditScore.com. Get the score. Teams of the NASCAR Nationwide Series going to now polish up those cars, tune them up for qualifying, and look ahead to Saturday's season opener for 300 miles here at Daytona International Speedway. Of course, this is the beginning of a long campaign for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. I know I'll stay away from the campaign analogies of going from state to state and looking for small victories and so on. But in November, someone will be crowned, not president, but champion of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. As you look at the field of potential championship contenders and you look ahead, who's your favorite for the season? Well, Dale talked about a clean slate and a lot of teams come in with, with enthusiasm and hopes that they can win this championship. But I, I really think Ricky Stenhouse, he showed me he was an emerging star last year and he came on and beat the very, very best uh, to win races and then win the championship. I really believe it's going to be hard to beat Ricky Stenhouse again this year. Yeah, he showed us a lot last year in that championship battle, and, and just he has what it takes. My only concern in agreeing with you there is does Roush Racing have the dollars that it takes to fund this and, and make it a championship effort again? So, therefore, I'm going to lean a little bit towards the Richard Childress side. I, I think that Elliot Sadler's in a great position again. He has a lot of motivation, does have the dollars and the funding, and I think it's going to may come down between he and his teammate, Austin Dillon. I know he's a rookie over here, but he's got a lot of talent and uh, the dollars and good help around him. I think it's going to be a fascinating season because it is such a clean slate this year, and we'll see who does emerge over the course of the year. As far as Saturday's race is concerned, of course, Tony Stewart has won this race four straight years. Yes or no, the smoke win five straight on Saturday. I'm not betting against him. I don't know about y'all. I'll tell yeah. you, it's hard to beat down here. I may not look very smart, but I'm smart enough to pick him. <laughs> <laughs> not going any other direction right yet. Here's what I do figure. The finish of Saturday's race will be terrific. Both the Daytona Nationwide races last year, margin of victory combined was 47 one-thousandths of a second. Gosh, Both rough. of them combined. And it'll be fun to see. Uh, Tony Stewart, how the drafting plays out Saturday and so on as we look ahead to uh, what will be a very exciting, I think, 300-mile race. Don't forget, tomorrow, NASCAR Nationwide Series qualifying ESPN2 will be here with the coverage at 2 Eastern time. And tomorrow night, the season opener for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. That's on speed at 7 Eastern time. The sparks always fly in that one. Then Saturday, our coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series presented by GoDaddy.com is on ESPN starting with NASCAR Countdown at noon Eastern time. On Sunday, we'll be here with NASCAR Now. We'll be here with Sports Center at the Daytona 500, wrapping up the Great American Race. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see a lot of different type of drafting between the two days, actually between all three of these days uh, with the trucks and, and the cup cars. So it should be a lot of fun and uh, could see some new winners. Could, could see some new winners, but it's going to be exciting. I, you know, the kind of drafting that we're going to see is still unknown. We don't know exactly how they're going to race when they get into the big pack. We know we're going to see some tandem racing, too. I think uh, based on what we've seen already, we know we're going to see some sparks fly, and we know we're going to see some fantastic finishes also. It's Daytona. You always do. E60 is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.